I'm gonna have the nerve to say he doesn't even believe me. I said, sir, I've been. So to be honest, this may be one of the most judged story times I ever do, but it's real, it's authentic, and I'm giving you my side of the story. So here's a story time of my celibacy journey. By the way, Paisley here, please subscribe. The bottom button right there, literally, to subscribe. So, yeah. Unfortunately, good or bad, I've been celibate for exactly two years. Um, here's my journey as to how I got there, the highs and lows. Um, honestly, I've been officially single for two years now. Um, dated a lot of men. I say dated, I literally mean they take me out places, might go do things in the city, but I'm not touching them in that way. They're not touching me in that way. It's strictly getting to know someone. And my last relationship fizzled out because um, he was super into me and I, and I knew that and I just didn't feel the same. There wasn't chemistry there. And I'm getting older. I'm 30 years old. At the time I was 28. My son was two, going on three. Like, I knew I wanted to date for a future. And that's how I see myself in dating, even to this day. I don't want to date for fun. I don't want to have rental benefits. I don't want to have any of those things. I want to date with potential in mind. You know, but not potential in mind, excuse me, with the possibility of there being a future. So, if I'm giving myself to everyone in the world, I'm losing the value of what intimacy should be. And I prayed for discernment. I prayed for um, God to kind of take me back from what I was doing. And I'm glad for that. You know, at that time, after that breakup, I got to know myself again. I didn't date or accept dates, I should say, for like six months. I really just kept to myself. The pandemic freshly hit, like, it was April, what, 2020? We were officially working from home and I wanted to reset. I wanted to move. I wanted new surroundings. I wanted a new area. I didn't want to be in the same room or apartment that all my other previous suitors, whatever you want to call them, were in. So I said, I'm moving. And I, I moved, got a new spot. And to this day, I have not done anything intimate in the spot. I'm keeping that promise. I bought myself at the time a cross necklace. I told myself, I even told God, like, God, help me. Like, I don't want to be weak, you know. Of course, we have needs, but it's so much bigger than that. So I hope anyone, like, that's struggling or thinking about doing a celibacy journey, um, figure out what works for you. For me, it was journaling. Like, my journal, baby girl is thick. <laughs> okay, like, look at here. Oh, you call getting thick, okay? This is years worth of diary entries, journal entries of like the failed dates or talking stages or situationships that didn't go nowhere. And I would think to myself, how pissed off would I be if I were to entertain that or give them another body count, which is low, it's low, okay? <laughs> Mine's kind of low out there, baby girl, just to be 30. <laughs> yeah, talk about it. Mine's pretty nice little number right there. No judgment, no judgment to anyone if they're what others may perceive high. Do you with your life? I'm not judging. But I wanted to get back to the mindset that this is supposed to be an act between two people who see growth and who see potential, who see a future. Um, so many men, especially in Ohio, honey. I feel like I'm walking blind because so many men I meet, they show their true colors so fast. Like, a lot when friends with benefits or they'll say, oh, I want to see what happens. So I'm like, okay, I can go on a date with you or I'll get to know you. And then they will be surprised, surprised. Like, I just slept with someone last week and it's just like, it's icky to me. Like, it's like, ew, it's icky. So I, this kind of is like rambling, so sorry, but. What helped me throughout my celibacy journey was kind of remembering the bigger picture. I know for a fact that the next person that I 
lay with or be someone I'm getting to know potentially just solely them and vice versa. If we're at a stage and we're still dating other people and talking and texting other people, me and you don't need to lay together. For what? For what? I don't know. If you feel comfortable laying with someone else and me, call me old-fashioned. That's fine. I'm not going to say you don't have the option to. You can. But there's levels to this dating shit, okay? There's the first date. There's, you know, dating. There's dating exclusively. And there's a relationship. I need to be in the kind of getting to know you dating exclusively stage, whatever that middle is. I don't know what that word is. I don't think they have a word, but it's like the middle. I need to be at the point where I'm comfortable with you enough that I can feel okay, you know, being naked and sharing my most intimate self. But like, um, and we see potential in it. We see like, you know, there's traits to this person that I like in the long run. You know, I think I want to get to know this person more. You know, we vibe so well mentally. Because I'm at a point in my life that the mental connection is not there. I'm instantly turned off. The idea of you sleeping with somebody else and here and here and there, you just like whatever, it turns me, it turns me off. It makes me feel like, mm. And I don't think all men are the same, but there are a lot of men who are so eager to let loose. So it just turns, it's a huge turn off for me from jump. And I don't know if I was crazy. Um, I don't want that. I know what I'm waiting for. I know what I'm waiting for is something special. Is someone special? Um, and has it been hard? So I get a lot of my friends, you know, even my female friends are like, girl, how did you do it? How did you go two years? Baby, prayer. Let's be real. Prayer. Um, and really being uh, set in stone in my mind and in my intentions that you know what? This has to be earned. I'm the Bitly baby. The Bitly, you can't just test drive the Bitly whenever you want, honey. Make an appointment. Like, you booked and busy. Like, no. Like, as in, <laughs> basically what I'm saying is, like, I know my worth before I go out on that date. I know my worth before I change my phone number. I don't have to. It's like my rate sheet. You might have a rate sheet um, for clients. You might have a rate sheet of, like, oh, I'm not accepting job offer if it's below the salary. Here's my minimum. I have a minimum to do things with intimately. And if you're not meeting that, I don't know what to tell you, baby. Thanks for trying. Thanks for applying. Appreciate it. Thanks for the offer. But no. And I don't feel bad. And I don't feel guilty because each person that's come and gone, they don't last long, baby. They're not lasting long. Maybe... It's me. I understand that a lot of women do. I'm not, I've never been, you know, I've met someone in the past who always has said, hey, don't put a number on things. So I'm not telling you you should wait a year. You should wait a month. You should wait first two days, three days. I feel like you and that person know that communication is so important to me that I just won't know off of, off of day one. I have to see how that communication goes because I know people can change like a, Job of a dime. They can change really quickly on their intentions, what they want. And I just need time to personally fill that out. And I feel like I pick up on, <laughs> I hate to say this, but I pick up on vibes pretty easily. Maybe it's a Libra thing. I don't know. But I pray so much. You know what I do when I meet someone new? I pray over it. I say, Father, if this person is not meant for me, please let me know. I know. And I know when I say that prayer, God lets me know in like less than 24 hours. I promise you every time something happens, I'm like, oh, okay, this hurt my person. Okay. Or he'll be like, all right, Paisley, here's signs A, B, and C. Don't wait till sign D to uh, exit. Let's pick up on things. And, you know, I respect anyone that I've met and they're like, hey, they're looking for something totally different. They're not in that space for what I'm looking for. And I do believe that men and women can be, is that, can I speak? I do believe that men and women can be platonic friends. And here's why. Because if you have self-control, can't nobody tempt you. If you have self-control, you have to know where to start and where to end. You have to take care of your boundaries. No one's going to watch you like you watch yourself. Point blank, period. 
You can't go to the bar and super drunk and messy, honey. You have to look out for yourself. It sucks. I wish that wasn't the case, but that's the world we live in. You have to protect yourself like no one, like no other person would. Um, and that's the same with being celibate. Like if you really want to stick to your guns with this journey and you really want to see how you grow as a person, because I am not the same person I was two years ago. I see things and see people so much clearer. It's so much easier for me. I'm not like in a haze. I'm not digmatized or anything, right? I'm like, okay, I can see with clear goggles who someone is when they enter my life. It don't take that long. Average is a month. And if we can't even make it to a month mark, baby, that's it. It's not that. And then in the words of Gucci man, miss one next 15, one coming. <laughs> Literally. So literally, long story short, my advice to anybody going through a celibacy journey or thinking about it, why not? I remember just by sheer luck of, you know, COVID, three months have passed and it was pretty easy. I said, let me do six months. Six months that came and that was for my birthday. I said, oh, okay, I'm 29. Let me just see. There's no one that I'm really like super excited for like dating wise to even entertain that idea. So let's just see how it goes. The next thing I know is April 2022, and I hit two years celibate, and um, I'm embracing it. I'm loving it. I love saying that. It makes me feel good. It gives me strength. It gives me power. Let's these men know what's up when they approach the kid. Like, oh, you thought maybe this strength. I'm mentally strong, physically strong. Know my worth from day one. And please believe. Just because if a man backs out because of that, that wasn't a man for you. That was a boy. We want boys. We want new boys over here. We do grown men. We do grown men. Um, so that is my story. I will I have a new video coming out this week or probably next week. I don't know what day this is. What is it today? Wednesday. I have a video coming out this weekend. It's kind of diving more into dating in your 30s. I'm really excited for to kind of get your feedback. Oh, by the way, subscribe. Yes, you. You. Subscribe. There's that button right there. Subscribe. I will forever appreciate it and love you forever. But that's my celibacy journey. So anyone going through it, give it a try. Try three months. That's a season. Go three months. Let me know what you think. Let me know how much clearer you see. You will not regret it. I promise you. Um, but that's my story time, my celibacy journey. And let me know if you've ever gone through one before. Um, how was it when you, you know, had intimate experience after that? Or are you still going strong? If you are, how long has it been? What's your goal? I look forward to talking with you all very soon. Stay blessed. Subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Bye.